In today's episode of Willful, we spoke with Mark Challen, an arts and culture historian, illustrator, and a Van Gogh with Copic Markers. You can watch and listen to Mark in action at stylecooler.com. You're a well-known style and design expert, but now you're focused on being an arts and cultural historian. Why is that important to you? Yeah, you know, you know I've thought a lot about this. And, and when I was a student of art history, you had the, you had the academic world, which was your, your highway forward. And if you didn't want to do the academic world, you had to go somewhere else. I love the academic world, but at, at a certain time, it just became too uh, self-massaging in my head. So I went into the world of entertainment and fashion and design. And then with that world, I found that world can get kind of vapid too, as you know, right? <laughs> you know, the same headlines, the same stories. I mean, if I read another story about, you know, how to wear a little black dress for fall, <laughs> I was going to kill myself. <laughs> so here I am at 47, not going down the academic world, not going down the fashion and design world, well, where next? And I think it's really the world of emotion and mood and, and understanding the meaning of things in a bigger contextual way. Have there been moments of self-doubt? Oh my gosh, yes, all the time, <laughs> every day. I had no idea when I left my regular job that I was gonna be on an emotional journey. Um, I mean, the, the, you know, working for 18 years, it was, it was pretty steady. Like I, you know, when you get up in the morning, shower, you, cha you, you change, you know, you put on your, your business drag for work, you drive into work, you, hello, 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 and then for, for nine hours, you basically know what you're getting at work every day. But when you don't have that routine, those rituals, and you wake up in the morning, every day is a new day, and it's, it's a blank slate, and you're not responsible to other people. Well, that means you have a lot of free time in your mind. Mm -hmm. And with free time comes the highs and the lows of creative thinking, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, after a week of what I thought was great work, I'd go back into my pad and look at everything. I just think, this is the ramblings of a madman. <laughs> Tear it up, start it fresh. And, and so I, I was plagued with self-doubt. And it's really only been, it's been a year, a year and one month since I left my old job. And really, only in the past three months has it started to feel great. But I would say to anyone who's, who's looking to make a big change, allow yourself a big chunk of time where you're, you're basically going to be raw, in a raw emotional state. Mm. If you want to push through that next that next creative hurdle, those next, you know, that, that glass ceiling, if you want to push through that and make a change, you've got to be prepared to have the highs and the lows. Right. And so I realized one of the things I had to, you know, to keep high, more highs than lows, was to always surround myself with, with good people. Okay, tell us more about that. Who, when you're making a big change like that, especially in your career and your life, yeah. Who are the best kinds of people to surround yourself with? Well, you'd think maybe it was sort of is, is yes men or yes women, but it's not that at all. It's, it's the friends who can give you like the, the tough love, you know, the friends who have the, the iron fist, but with the velvet glove, <laughs> who can tell you maybe what you don't want to hear, but in a nice way. So I, you know, my friends became my focus groups. Huh. Yeah, so, so we would get together, <laughs> usually on Friday nights, over many drinks, and I would bring my pads. So, so I should tell you, I, write, I, I do everything now analog, old school. Yep. So even though I have my computer to log ideas, I, my, my gateway to this next phase of, of style cooler has been my, my pads, my pads of paper. And so I write everything down. So every Friday night, I would get together with my friends, we'd, we'd open a bottle of wine, and I'd flip through and what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Do you like this idea? And they really kind of, no, yes, they kind of kept me in. Yeah. And without them, I don't think I'd be sitting here next yeah. to you right now. So, so friends are very important. So that's one thing. The other thing is, is what we're consuming every day in terms of media. If you're going to have a lot of highs and lows with a new job, you cannot be, you cannot be consuming negative things. Okay. You just can't. So I knew certain things I wouldn't watch on TV. I wouldn't go to bed watching the news because that would bring me into a, a difficult place. It's not to say I want to put um, all kitten whiskers and unicorns, but I would listen to podcasts 
that were meaningful and had good messages. I'd surround myself with, with like positive thinking and positive people, positive media. And that, that, that foothold, that sort of strength of positivity helped me get through the tough times where I, I didn't think I had anything to offer. Mark, what is your definition of success? I, I do think it has to deal with um, respect from your peers. That matters to me. You know, it, it, it always has, ever since I was a little kid. And I'd get up in a play, and if there was applause, that was success. So I think, I like the gold star. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, you know I, maybe a stronger man, that wouldn't matter to. But I, I do like to think that, you know, if, I, if I'm going to leave a bit of a, uh, success is also a bit of a legacy. Yeah. You know, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to leave behind a bit of a mark on this earth when, when I'm gone. Not so much to say, oh, he was fabulous, or wasn't he great, but it's more like he... He moved the conversation in an interesting way. Yeah. I think for me, that's the, the most success I could have. Is, is if, I, if I was gone tomorrow, for, for people to say, well, well, he had an interesting take on life and made me think of something differently. The idea of someone just saying, well, he made me think deeper. Yeah. Mark, thank you for being willful. My pleasure.